In this video, we're going to introduce you to the Array Environment, an extremely useful tool for a course in linear algebra like the one you're taking right now. If you haven't seen our previous Introduction to LaTeX video, we suggest you watch that one first. Here we'll be going through a typical problem in linear algebra where we're asked to solve a system of equations in three unknowns x, y, and z. You can see a sample solution is written up on the right here. We start off by stating the problem with nicely aligned equations. We write a solution which involves augmented matrices, and at the end, we state that our solution vector ends up being 1, 2, 3. Let's dig into the LaTeX code and see how this document was created. Recall from our previous video that every LaTeX document has two sections, a preamble, which is everything before the begin document statement, and then a main body, which is everything between the begin document and end document statements at the end. We'll be focusing on the body here because the preamble is the same as in our introductory video. First, note that we're using the boldface command to state our problem. This is not extremely important, but just an extra little tool you might want to use. The main tool of interest in this video is the array function, and we've used this in two places. The first is in defining our system of equations. Notice that there are several parts to this environment. First, it's enclosed in double dollar signs, which means we're working in the math environment throughout. Second, you'll notice it has to start with a begin array and finish with an end array declaration. Third, you'll notice that there's this RRRRR repeated seven times within curly brackets next to the begin array declaration. These letters right here correspond to the alignment that we'd like to place in each column within our array. So for example, if I look at these values and I change, say, the third to last one to L, let's see what happens to our output. Notice now in the third to last column where I have the Z terms written, the two is now aligned with the Z's instead of the Z. If I change it back to R and recompile my result, now the Z's are lined up in that column as well. Now between the begin array and the end array statements, I have the three rows of my output. Notice that in these three rows, I have each column separated by an ampersand. I personally find it useful to line up these ampersands so that I am guaranteed to have the same number of them in each row. The one mistake that I see a lot though is putting a different number of ampersands per row and this sort of formatting will help you get around that issue. Each row ends with double back slashes to indicate the start of a new row. So the basic format is ampersand separate elements between columns and double backslashes separate rows. Moving on down the document, the second place where we use the array function is in the creation of our augmented matrix. This is very similar to the first declaration with two exceptions. First of all, we have a backslash left bracket and backslash right bracket at the beginning and the end of the declaration. This creates the brackets around our matrix in the output. Second, notice that I've placed a vertical line in between the third and the fourth columns. This is to create the corresponding vertical line in our augmented matrix. If I took this out, then I would simply get a standard 3 by 4 matrix, which of course will also be useful in writing up solutions to problems in the future. For now, I'm going to put it back in though. As we move down the document, we have some exposition explaining what we're going to do next, and we're going to subtract row 1 from row 3. Now on paper, you would have to rewrite the whole matrix and change something, probably making an error, probably having to erase, probably having to deal with eraser shards and torn paper. What I like about writing this type of problem in LaTeX is that instead of rewriting everything, we can simply copy and paste the previous matrix. And then if I want to subtract row 1 from row 3, I can just go down here and perform that operation very quickly. Recompile my output, and you'll see the new matrix appears below the old. The third place we've used the begin array is again in stating a system of equations. Notice in this case, I didn't take the time to bother lining up all the x's, y's, and z's. The only thing I'm lining up in this equation now is the equal signs. And just to demonstrate my earlier point that it really doesn't matter, Notice that in the output, even when I didn't have them aligned in the, the LaTeX document, they were perfectly aligned over here. If I align them in the input, it changes nothing in the output. 
Finally, you use back substitution to solve the system of equations and restate the result. And notice here I'm using inline math for all of the equations.